Good day everyone. Welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we will continue from where we stopped in the last tutorial about kinetics. So now, um, from our last tutorial, we were able to determine the conversion of both reactors, right? Based on the um, rate data we specified were able to um, determine the conversion and like i said the kinetics in aspen isis is based on reactor volume right so i believe reactor volume affects um conversion right so we would in this lecture see how varying um setting process parameters actually affect the conversion of both reactors right and to do this We'll be making use of the Aspen ISIS case studies, right? A feature in the software called case studies. Now, we have case studies in the home tab. So, in your simulation environment, for you to find it, you have to be in the home tab. So, if you are in any other tab, you have to go back to the home tab, right? The home tab by the top left. So, once you click on it, under analysis, under the analysis section, you would find the case studies right so with this you can actually do an analysis to see the effect of varying a particular process parameter on another right so when you vary a particular process variable you get to see its effect on other process variables that is the essence of these case studies right so once you click on it you can actually start a case study so we'll be starting with um for this illustration, we'll be starting with reactor volume. We'll start with reactor volume for both. We'll do a case study for both the CSTR and the PFR as well. So first, we do case study one and case study two. Right, case study one will be for the CSTR, while case study two will be for the PFR. Now, in the case study environment, the first thing you have is variable selection. Right, so the first thing you need to do is to select the variables you actually want to analyze. Right, so for variables, we have the independent variables and the dependent variables. Right, so now for the independent variables, these are variables that were specified in the flow sheet by the user. Right, by this user. So, for example, in the flow sheet, you have, you have volume as three. So now you see that volume was specified by the user because it is in thick blue color, right? So you have the um, variables in blue and then you have the variables in black, right? You have the variables in black. The variables in black are variables that were calculated by the software, right? While the variables in blue are the variables that were specified by the user, right? So you still have it also in the um, feed stream. You have the variables in blue, then you have variables in black, right? So the variables in blue were specified by me, while the variables in black were calculated by the software, right? So, and then you have these ones in um, light blue, or, um, sorry, uh, not light blue, like it's not bold, right? Okay, so this one, the um, variables are bold. They were specified by the user. The ones that are black were calculated by the software. Then the ones that are not thick, right? So you have bases and the, it's in blue actually, but it's not as bold as this other one, right? It's not as bold as this, right? These ones are um, default values, right? Or default specifications, right? So when it's not bold, it's a default specification. When it's bold, it was specified by the user. And when it's black, it was calculated by the software so that's how it works so your independent variables are variables that you specified in your model right so in this case i'm making use of reactor volume so for this one we are using cstr right cstr then um, tank volume right because i can't find reactor volume here so i make use of tank volume so once you click on it you select it and it's here then you click done Right, but before we go there, let's look at object type. So in object object type, we have both the um, equipment involved in the process and then the 
streams right so you have the streams and the equipment all of them are found here so you can do case study on a particular equipment or a stream in your process right so you have all of them so if you click on only streams only the streams involved in the process will appear if you click on unit ops only the equipment will appear right so you have all of them right here you have logicals, utilities, custom, right? So, but you click all to be able to assess all of them, right? So to be able to assess both the streams and the equipment. So in this case, we were using CSTR before I made that um, illustration, right? So after selecting, you click done, right? So we selected, what we selected was tank volume. Yes, we selected tank volume. Uh, I can't even. Okay, yes. Yes, so we selected tank volume. Let me see. Yes. So once you click on tank volume, you click on the arrow and you are able to add it here. Then you click done. Right, so we have added tank volume. Then we have the dependent variables, right? Dependent variables are the variables calculated by the software. So all the variables in black, right? All the variables in black, wherever you find them, right? They are, or they can be dependent variables, right? Wherever you can find them, whether in the product or in the stream, the feed stream, anywhere you find the variables that are in black color, those variables are your dependent variables right so in this case we can work with um cstr um conversion actual percent conversion and you will see now you see that it's in black right and this is the current value as calculated by the software and you see it's in black color while the current value for the tank volume which was specified by the user is in thick blue color right so these are the differences so once you specify the variables you can go to the case study setup right in the setup you have the case study type the case study type so these are the different types of case studies you have you have sensitivity you have nested you have discrete and then you have base and shift so in this case you can actually make use of um, sensitivity i like to use sensitivity so but there are, you can also explore the other um, types of case study that we have here right so what they do is they give you different combinations for your um, analysis right they give you different combinations based on what you specify on this other side so but in this case i want to use sensitivity and now this sensitivity is similar to the one you have in aspen plus right so in aspen plus you really don't have case studies right what you have there is sensitivity analysis right so this is similar to that of aspen plus right so just come here and choose your case study type whichever one you like and then you can now specify the range for your independent variable right so you are going to specify a range so in this case our independent variable is tank volume and you have to specify a range for it so i want to make use of a range of 0 0.5 to 6 meter cube right 6 meter cube right this is what i want to do so this is my range so you have an upper bound and a lower bound right then you can either specify the step size or the number of steps Right. In this case, I want to st specify the steps. Yeah, the number of steps. Yes, that's what I want to specify. So I want 20 steps and then it automatically calculates the step size. Right. The step size is the difference between two steps. Right. The two steps. The difference between two steps is the step size. So after you specify all of this, you see this message down here it says not run right so you have to run your um case study right but before you run you have to ensure that this is ticked reset after run you have to ensure it's ticked in case it's not ticked you have to manually tick it yourself right so the essence of reset after run is so that the process conditions in the flow sheet can be um, specified after the case study has taken place so you have your current values right 
you have your current values for the different um, process variables you specified in the flow sheet right so after the whole case study has run the software will reset it back to the initial values that you specified in the process right that is the essence of this reset after run right so that the values don't change so once you click on it and you run after the analysis has been done the software will reset the values back to the original values you specified in the flow sheet so that is the essence of reset after run so once it's ticked the next thing is to actually run your case study by clicking run so you just click on it and then it runs it right so once it's done running it you will see this message you see success so after that you can now check the results so you can check the results by clicking on the results right so this is the result of this particular um, case study of volume against um, of um, conversion against volume right because the volume is the um, the independent variable right so these are the results right so you see um, the conversion percentage at these different um, at the different um, volumes that have been specified based on the case study setup right right so that's it so you get your um, conversion values right? so the difference between these two um, or the difference between two um, cases is your step size right so if you calculate it if you subtract this from this you should get um, this 0 0.2895 right by the time you do this minus this you will get it you do this minus this you get that step size value right so and then these are the values of conversion so you can see that as the um, tank volume as the reactor volume increases you see that the conversion increases as well right so and you can also be able to visualize that using the plot section so you just click on plots and then you you are able to see the plots right so this is the plot for this um, particular case study right so from here you can see what we are talking about yes so you can see what we are talking about so you see that um, as your um as your tank volume increases you see that conversion increases right you see the increase in conversion until you get to the maximum um volume that was specified in the range right the max was six meter cube right so that's where the um plot stops it stops at six meter cube because that was what was specified so you can actually specify a larger range right and um, run it again and then see the effect right so this is the first the first is um um uh reactor volume right so and this is for the cstr so we can repeat the same procedure for the pfr so for the pfr we are making use of pfr 100 and then reactor volume so in this case we have reactor volume and we click done right then we also use conversion of the pfr so conversion of the pfr um yes so this is conversion of the pfr so we have that and then we can run um, the case study so we are still using sensitivity and then we are using the same range just the same range and we can work with that right and we are using the same number of steps right so it calculates the step size and then you can click on run right just click on run and it runs it so it runs the um it actually runs the um, whole thing for you and then you get your success message so once you get the success message you can then check your results right so you can check your results and then you can also check your plot so this is your plot for case study 2 right this is the plot for case study 2 so this is how it goes for the pfr so an initial increase in um an initial increase in volume actually increases the conversion but then i think an additional increase does not really have an effect on the conversion right so from 0 0.5 to um about 
one point something, right? One point something um, meter cube, you have an increase in conversion. But beyond that, there is no more increase in conversion. Uh, that's why you have the graph to be flat, right? So, and you can also confirm that in the results. So you see that from 0 0.5, the conversion increases up to about 1.7 meter cube and then the conversion becomes stagnant right so this is how you can actually analyze some of the parameters in your process right so we can quickly do maybe we can do um let's do for temperature let's see how temperature goes yeah let's do for temperature for both of them um add yes so for csdr i want to use the liquid outlet temperature so we have leak yeah leak so i want to use liquid outlet temperature yes because it was specified by the user so i want to use that then i still use conversion of the csdr right csdr 100 actual percent conversion right so um yes so we have this so we can specify our range as well our range is um 30 to about let's say 86 right 86 and then you have your step size as 20 so with that we run our model again and yes so it has run and then um we can check the results so these are the results um yes these are the results so you see that an increase in temperature actually increases conversion up to 71 percent right so let me show you um this is leak right here so i was varying this particular temperature right this outlet temperature that was specified so that was what i was varying in this particular case study right so we varied from 30 to about 86 degrees celsius right and we have this um, increase in conversion up to 71 percent right so we see that temperature actually affects the conversion of the reactor in a way right so and we can check the plot okay so this is the plot right this is the plot so it increases steadily with increase in temperature right conversion increases steadily with increase in temperature until it gets to 80 where it now or close to 80 where it now increases um drastically right it increases drastically so we can also repeat the same procedure for um the pfr so pfr we have um okay let me check the so for pfr is this um, outlet temperature that was specified yes so we can um, we can work with that um find variables um that was um yeah this so temperature temperature and that so we are good to go then um for the um conversion we are using the pfr conversion right so you see that in this case we are varying the unit variable and a stream variable right so in the case of this um um uh, case study you see that this um the temperature is from the is from a stream right so this is a stream variable for the independent variable we use a stream stream variable here while for the dependent we used a an equipment variable right but for this one the first one we did um, yeah the first one we did we use the um, equipment variables for both right so this is tank volume and um, actual percent conversion right so you can either do between two um, equipment variables two stream variables or an equipment variable and a stream variable right you can either do any of those combinations right so um yeah so we can run this um we are using the same range so we see what actually happens so this is just for illustration right um, you can actually increase the um, range you can actually increase the range to whatever range you like right so this one i'm just doing is for illustration so after specifying everything um i won't know i want to use sensitivity here so 
um, let's change it so after specifying everything you just click on run right i prefer using the sensitivity yes so we can run this and then yeah so it's going to run when it's done running you see the success message yeah so you see resetting values right that resetting values is because the reset after run is actually ticked right so we can check the results um yep so this is the result so in this case too we have an increase in um, conversion an increase in conversion as the um as the temperature increases right but we have a situation where some of the values are actually stagnant so we can view that from the okay okay so this is it so we see that um, initially an increase in temperature does not actually yield an increase in conversion right until you get to about um let's see about 70 something degrees right about 77 degrees that is when temperature begins to increase conversion from 77 degrees upward right so from from the initial value which was 30 degrees up to that 77 degrees the conversion is stagnant right the conversion does not increase conversion remains constant until you get to 77 degrees and then with that an increase in temperature now leads to an increase in conversion as you can see right so in this way you are able to analyze your um process parameters and then you are able to um, select um values that can actually optimize your process right by the time you do all of these um, analysis right? so that is the advantage of actually doing um this analysis um with the software right so basically this is how case studies work in the software right and in a previous video i already told you how to actually export right so you can export you can export your um your data that is generated from the analysis for this one we already have the send to excel right so once you click send to excel it's exports the data generated directly to excel then for the plots for the plots you can actually print plots right so it prints the plot as a pdf right so you can actually extract this as a pdf so basically that's how all of these work right so um based on all we have done i would actually like to give you um, a practice problem that you can actually try out for this class and the previous lecture right so both combined um yes so both of them combined let's see um yep so this is it so we have a practice problem that we can actually work with um yes yes so this is it right here so should i increase okay so this is what you should actually practice so you can pause the video and um take note of this um uh, this is it so um yeah normal butane um reacts to produce isobutane and it's actually a reversible process right it's a reversible process and this is the kinetics um this is the uh reaction equation and then below it are the kinetics of both the forward yeah the forward and the backward reaction i believe yes yes so um so i'm giving you um one second to look at this all of this data so just pause the video and take note of the um important um details in this um paragraph right then after you have done that you can come down and also pause the video at this point so that you can also take note of the kinetics so this is the kinetics of the equation right so this is the 
reaction equation then this is the forward right the forward um kinetic expression right this is the forward expression k1 cn uh c4 right then this is the um rate constant value right this right here is the rate constant expression right the value of k1 then you also have the backward um, expression as well which is minus um r i c4 is equal to k2 um c i c4 right and then this is the um rate constant of the backward reaction right this is the rate constant of the backward reaction so this is the details or these are the details you need for the um modeling and then let's see okay so it also gives us the fluid package and the reactor volume right yes yes so it says um for the pfr length it says use the same length as calculated by HISIS in the CSTR model. So if you were in our last class, you remember that we copied a value from the um, CSTR reactor into the PFR. So this is the hint. So um, in the CSTR model, HISIS calculates the length and the diameter. So just copy that length from your CSTR model to your PFR. Right, so that means you have to model the CSTR before you model the PFR, right? So basically that is it, right? So so that you can be able to get the calculated value from the CSTR and copy it to your PFR, right? So after you have done that, um, you have specified your volume, I think HISIS will calculate the conversion. So the question says, um, the question says, um, um, calculate the pfr and cstr volumes necessary to process um 163 kg mole per hour at 70 percent conversion right 70 percent conversion right 70 percent conversion so you are asked to determine the volumes of the reactor that will yield 70 percent conversion of normal butane right so you can actually do a case study right a case study will help you determine the actual amount um the actual volume required to um the, uh, yield 70 percent conversion of butane right so you can do a range you can choose a range any range you like for both the cstr and pfr that will actually give you um 70 percent in between right so you can for example you can try a range of one to ten meter cube and see the conversion values that it generates if it's not up to 70 then you can increase the range until you get um your desired goal which is 70 percent conversion right and then you can now know the volume right of both the pfr and cstr right that is um, required to yield 70 percent right so after modeling your process for both the pfr and cstr i would expect that you do a case study as we have learned in this tutorial to determine the volumes required for 70 percent conversion right so if you have not gotten the questions properly you can actually rewind this video and pause to get full details of this um, practice problem so if you have issues with this particular problem i would like to hear from you in the comment section like this video share with your friends and then subscribe to this channel if you have not done so yet thank you for joining me in this tutorial do have a good day